Welcome back to The Watch and the second part of Rings of Power Behind the Scenes. Yeah, because the first one was so the enjoyable. The first one was so enjoyable. Learning about that ice troll and the beard and... and, and Meth. Yeah, meth. <laughs> meth. Apparently he's out, apparently. That's the thing we've heard oh, now. Yeah. That Rex is gone. It's all female now. It's all female, so that's some news for you all. But mm. let's just dive straight into reacting to... Part two of Behind the Scenes. Let's see what exciting things they have to share with us this time. Let's be reminded of how garbage episode two was. Do you blame us for your being stranded here? The way I see it, it wasn't elves that chased me from my homeland. Uh, uh, story thing. Was it elves that chased him from his homeland if he was in I mean, the Southlands, technically? I mean, this is Sauron, so... Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I have no... I still don't know, actually. After watching the show, I'm still left with so many questions as to why is he here, out in the middle of the ocean? Who chased him away? What happened? <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Anyway. Oh, yes, by the way, that's how vast an ocean they're in. Yeah. She swam through that. Yep. Somehow, she and thought she him. could swim back home. Have you considered seeking partners outside the confines of our own race? Um, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. That's long hair. That yeah. is long hair. That's concept art for the... Uh, for the show. Oh, Wait, where'd true. That, where'd that go? <laughs> what happened to long hair? Yeah, where is it? got haircuts. Uh, that concept art, I think, looks better than the show. Yeah, yeah, way better. Like, even the elven helmets and all, it seems more in line with the Jackson trilogy. And one thing to mention is one of them has blonde hair and one of them has black hair. So who would those two characters be? Well... In terms damn. of lore, who do you think I would know. be? Well, one should be Elrond. Yeah. Yeah. So that mean, what that's mean, the thing. Both, then? Well, here's the thing. If that's the, supposed to be Celebrimbor and Elrond, they both should be black hair. Oh. So I don't know who that is. But they did go with the lighter hair for Celebrimbor. Yeah. Yes. So maybe? I. Still very confusing, though. But, I mean, just the fact that that was an actual thing and they made it such a... Oh, elves just look differently in this, in this time period. It, wow. So you guys are lying. Well, you yeah, did have that plan to make them Their own hit. concept art is rebuking themselves. Yep. Look, the concept art compared to the show looks good, mm. but I'm kind of looking at this and it looks very photoshopped together. Like, there's beautiful concept art that, like, you mm. kit bash really well. This one still feels a little bit cheap. You know? I, well, I don't know too much, so... Different. I think it looks all right. On a like glance, it looks, yeah, it looks pretty good. Concept, sure. Like, it's, like, it's not as good as, like... Other concept art. Yeah, exactly. Shows, That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I'm sure it's fine though. It's it's fine. Again, know? I'm just surprised that elves look like elves in this in this version. And do keep in mind, even the guards have long hair. Mm. Yeah. Hang on a second. Those look like elvish guards. Yeah. And that means in this concept art they had an escort, when in the show they didn't. And they just walked all the way there without any supplies or anything. <laughs> The concept art makes them look even more cheap. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? They really like so doing the that close-up breathing thing, don't they? <sighs> <sighs> it's uncomfortable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's... Can you stop? Please? Nathan, can you stop, please? Please. Yeah. <laughs> I make no promises. I love you in the middle of the sea, adrift, trying to go back to middle earth. So he's fired now. In that, yeah, yep. he, that guy's he's fired. Because all females will do a better job, I Apparently guess. so. I mean... Because well, men was no. the problem. Let's just I was going to say something yeah. spicy, yeah. but I'm going to... Yeah. Good luck, everyone. So you find Galadriel in the middle of the sea, adrift. It's funny he says that she's in the middle of the sea, adrift. As like if it, she just yeah. somehow got there. It yeah, wasn't her choice in jumping did, yeah, off the boat. Just, it's complete coincidental. It's chance. None of this was on purpose. In that adventure, she will find characters. And one of the most interesting characters is Halbrand. Well, it's the only character basically is Halbrand. Everyone else dies. Yeah, pretty when much. When they were they're like, oh no, she's an alpha. And they die like a minute later. So yeah, Very convenient. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, and she runs away. And then she's like, you left them to die. Yeah. And then but it's like, Halbrand's like, no, actually you did. Yes, yeah, so, like, so did you. So what's the big deal? And the shadow comes out of the mist and Halbrand comes and picks her up. She's saved, which I don't think she enjoys. <gasps> You kidding me? She doesn't enjoy being saved. So you're saying so she's ungrateful. Yeah. 
Thank you. She was adrift by what? her own means, <laughs> was going to die, and then not get saved. Oh, damn well, it. you know, at least it comes across in the scene that she's ungrateful. Yeah. So... Well, that face she just made there is definitely ungrateful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... Ugh, I'm getting saved. How dare you? How dare you even be in my presence, you horrible mortal? He's skeptical of her. He's wary of her. He doesn't trust her. Wait, what? Why did no. you two have a heart-to-heart on the raft then? Uh... If you didn't... Ugh. Like, other people on the raft, I think... Like, I haven't seen other people yet on this raft, like, mm-hmm. in, in the behind the scenes, but in the show... Oh, it don't matter. Then. Everyone else is in him, and they're, like, arguing about it. The girl's like, no, save her, she's a woman. Like, basically saying that, and all of the guys yeah. are like, nah, she's an elf, kill her, throw her overboard. <laughs> and they're I mean, ignoring that completely. Yeah. Just the context of what he just said. He doesn't trust her, he doesn't... He's... He's Sauron. Yeah. What? He's going to trust a random elf? Like, what? What are you saying, oh, bro? Oh, it's not random. It's his opposite, <sighs> apparently. And if you don't trust her, why are you saving her? It, you're Sauron? He's evil. He's literally evil. Yeah. You know, Dark Lord, that whole thing. Oh, he doesn't trust her. Oh, and I love that she's supposed to be the most perceptive of elves and doesn't realise it. I wonder how they're going to explain that in these making of. They won't. <laughs> Let's just be real, they won't. From the moment that he meets her, an undeniable sort of spark. And then they're hit by a massive, massive tempest. The spark is there. <laughs> so, they were going for it. so they were going for it then. Oh, yeah, yeah, they were for absolutely sure. going for it. And it wasn't unintentional like some people were trying to make it out to be. No, it is <laughs> very intentional, very uncomfortable. No. Why? Stop trying, please. Please. Now they want this to be a thing. Get ready for Sorondriel. Oh, so... Uh, That's what it's called. Uh. Well, they've got all female directors, so if they do, can't blame anybody but them now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. True. True. Prepare yourself. <laughs> right. I don't know why. <laughs> It's like they're dating the first night in the bedroom and she's... What? Oh. It's the Willow acting. The same as the Willow actor. Actually, yeah, you're right. It's very... It's the f- oh my yeah, it's God. very wooden. It's the same thing. <laughs> oh. Here's the thing now. Going back to this, I'm still not sure which one is actually worse, Willow or this. Because they're on par at times. I would just put them on the same level. That's the you same know what? Thing. That I- is fair. I agree. Because the dialogue... Well, the dialogue. acting and dialogue is... Atrocious, and I've seen both now. And I, I will admit, Warwick Davis, I think, is probably the worst. But it comes off genuine the way of like he doesn't want to be there or do that. Like, like he, I, I feel like hmm. I haven't seen his acting in recent years. But maybe he's just putting in zero effort because he knows the show's going to suck. Maybe, but at a certain point, it gets down to the lines you're given. Like, yeah, yeah. And the lines that I'm listening to, I just. Not good. No. Go watch our episode four review for yeah for Willow specific references. Where I feel like these people are very excited to be on Rings of Power and be in Lord of the Rings, but they can't act. Again, uh, Morph Meth. <laughs> she she didn't even know who she was auditioning for. So yeah. I, I don't know if she's excited. Maybe she's just like, oh, big role. Basically, probably most of these actors are like, mm. oh, Amazon set piece, heck yeah. Well, it costs a billion dollars. Money's going to go to salaries as well. Yeah. Or this giant water tank, which I guess that must have been where they spent most of their money. Which, all right, I'll give them that impressive water tank. But <laughs> couldn't you just film out in the sea? If that's, that's all you have to show for the show. We built this massive water tank here. Yeah, we got lots of stuff but in Peter there. Jackson's like, we have the whole ocean in yeah. New Zealand. I'm sure it's just like a swimming pool that they've blacked out or something. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> The storm was one of the moments where I really got to see, like, all the gears working around me, which was terrifying and amazing. What? Mm, man, even her interview, she feels so watered and uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, this is the first time you get to see all the gears working around you that make you, what, terrifying but amazing. Like... <sighs> She's not convincing me that she can act, unfortunately. Or be a personality either. Mm. I just don't understand these people, that's all. Every time I look at these behind the scenes, I'm just feel like I don't. You should be grateful. You should be so happy and I'm just excited to be there. It's yeah. just boring and annoying. Obviously, the scale of the water is very difficult to emulate. But we've got a very large tank, and we had some really big waves created. We had wind, and we had lightning. So they go through this storm, and then the raft gets struck by lightning. Oh no! What are the odds? 
the mast severs and drags her to the bottom. Even Aru Louvatar's angry with her. <laughs> <laughs> Jump yeah. off the boat. Stop being annoying. So much of it was just about being like comfortable with the water. That moment where you don't feel like your hand's just going through the water, you feel like you're manipulating the water and well, you're in. I guess it's just a coincidence that it looks like a cross. I'm glad you're getting on it. You know wow. what? That I didn't just, actually notice that. That's just a coincidence. Hmm. I mean, How do you feel about that? I mean, cross imagery works a l in lots of areas. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's the whole situation's dumb. Like that, uh, what, how we got to here is yeah. frustrating enough. Let alone trying to put in like, you know, cross what, symbolism. What is things. so unbelievable about their raft getting struck by lightning? I, I just don't. Understand. Or just the way, like how uncomfortable the actor and how was. she fell off with uh, ropes tied around her. When he was talking about like, oh yeah, we're on the raft, and then got struck by lightning, and then we went like and got found, and then yeah. we drowned, and then we didn't drown, and then we went to and this then we place. found the Ark of the Covenant, yeah. and then the Holy Grail, and then we found it. Like yeah, mm. it, it's uh, come on. I, I'm not finding the same passion and excitement or just fun mm. on the set. Like, I will admit the water tank thing. It's impressive. It's impressive. Probably takes a lot of work and effort and, like, that took mm. a whole massive team you to do. Here's the thing, though. Remember when we all thought it was going to be the fall of Numenor and that's why they had the massive water tank? <laughs> I didn't have it. <laughs> that was the rumour that was going around that that's what it was for. Guess not. No, it was just for the ocean scene. Which, hey, look, it's impressive they were able to simulate that. It was to facilitate Galadriel but, and Sauron talking to each other. Though, yeah, and that's, that's the it. thing, though. Like, I look at all this work that was put in by the crew, mm. and then look at the actors who were, like, so I mean, wooden and unconfident, and mm. just, it's... it's. I mean, look, I will give it to them on that. That water tank is very impressive. I feel like the actors and the story is just dragging everything else down. Yep. Like, if you had a good script, and you had better actors who knew what they were doing this would have been a great TV show because people p obviously put in the effort for harder scenes like this. And then again, it's kind of the story with a lot of um, crews that do this sort of thing. They're always more passionate than, the than everyone else. Up. Yeah, yeah. That was really amazing and also really great in terms of like having a tiny inkling of what it would feel like to be an elf because that... What? Just the way that she pieces her words together. I, it's um, like... What the hell does that have to do with being an elf? Yeah, you're drowning. Oh, I know how it's that's, like that's being like an elf now. <laughs> like, what? Well, she was talking about she was drowning, and then <laughs> it, it went from, like, being dragged to, like, manipulating the water. And that was amazing, and now she feels like an elf. Like, But that's not what... I've never seen elves it's do that. It's just, like, word vomit. That's yeah. all that she's saying. It's just AI like... AI-generated <laughs> script. This is yeah. AI-generated interview script. Uh, yeah, at this point I can believe it. Oh, like interns, right? Better than this. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, you get into a universe. Okay, stop. Tyron, I've got to get your opinion on that helmet for the dwarves. The one with the full face cover. With the beard. Yeah, it looks stupid. Thank you. I'm glad you agree. It looks like, uh, I think it's like Henry the something th of England's yes his one yes uh, yeah I know exactly what you're talking about it, it, was, stu it was stupid then it's stupid now <laughs> yeah it looks really bad. where different races are relating to each other in a very ordinary way he's not greeted in Casa Doom very well <laughs> he's certainly not greeted in Casa Doom the way he thinks he's going to be greeted in Casa Doom you know Rond and Durin have been pals for a very long time which is unusual for dwarves and elves but our friendship has become Again, brother. concept art looks really good. Actually does. Looks way... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I'll give it the dwarf sections this. I think they're probably the best looking in yeah, the show. I agree. And they've probably got the best actors as well. The best part of the show, yeah, was, yeah. was the dwarven stuff. Well, I the dwarves are just interesting in general. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, especially with the history of the dwarves, how they were the first race created and then got punished for it. Like, mm -hmm. I like the dwarves in a general sense. Same, same. And... I just wish they had a better script because the guy who plays Durin the Fourth is actually good as an actor. Well, in this interview thing here as you, well, you don't like you don't like the script. Give me the meat and give it to me raw. Like you don't like you don't like the script. You breathe like a orc. Here's a drink, Ladriel. My good friend. Meth. What? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I also think dwarves just in their they're the most characterized creatures in Middle Earth. Like. Elves are basically just like humans with pointy ears in this show, and humans yeah. are just like. Dwarves actually just, feel like dwarves uh, in this one. Uh, like boring people. 
who were just like, the owl's going to take our job. Like, oh, oh, man, don't even get me started on what... Oh. We'll get there. I can't oh. wait to hear them justify that. I don't think they're going to. They're going to skip no. over it. Because yeah, I mean, they already skipped over the fact that Gladrill just swam back to Middle Earth. And encountered Sauron. <laughs> And survive. Now we're just back at the storm. dwarves, and they're like, "Oh, you know, they don't get along much, but these two get along, even the right now. I'm not getting along." Like, <clears throat> also, they weren't eaten by a giant fish. Forgot to mention that part. Yeah. No, the... Nothing. We're not going to talk about that at all. <laughs> the giant fish that showed up and then disappeared. Convenient. I don't understand. <laughs> that must have been bizarre. <laughs> just reviewing that. I don't even know how you'd approach they, it. They were watching and reviewing this show. It made me realize that they have a goldfish memory. Like, once a scene cuts, so even, fun. no, not even when a scene cuts, yeah. w- within the scene, when there's a cut, they'll forget what the last cut was. Yeah. Uh, they'll completely just forget. They'll I be can... like, all right, we're going to travel all the way to the to the dwarves and then cut. Oh, we're there now. Don't even forget about how you traveled there, whether or not you take any gear with you. Where we're just going to walk all the way from our base. Have an escort or yeah. something like no, that. Just, Someone carrying your luggage, maybe. Have a map oh, well. of the, like, stuff like that where I, there's so many questions, so many questions unanswered. You missed my wedding. <laughs> the birth of my children, two of them. That's the thing, he's trying in the scene. He's really trying to get across some emotion. But... Ah. Like, he's a good actor. It's yeah. just so funny. The, the lines, lines are funny. The lines are just <laughs> like, funny. Yeah. The conflict is, you missed my wedding! Two of my children, you haven't returned any of my messages? Like, what's going like, Do you not think about me at all? Yeah. <laughs> like... And he's probably just like, oh, sorry, I must have gotten lost in the mail. Like, I, I didn't think to check on you in 20 years. Sorry, I'm just a terrible Oops. friend. <laughs> Whoops. He really is. I was just sitting in my in my tree writing for, for the king or whatever. I'm back. Yeah, wishing I was an elf lord. Oh, wait. In the books, he was. <sighs> oh, you didn't know that part, did you? Yeah. He's not an elf yeah, lord. Yeah, 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 I know. One of the main themes in the Tolkien universe. <laughs> That is literally the meme of, like, how you talk to short people. Uh, yeah. Sorry, little buddy. Sorry. <laughs> they so proud. Look at this. Look at this, like, effort in visual effects, okay? They're actually the same height, but they managed to make it magical. Look at this. Given the amount of money they spent, you better hope they get that one basic thing right. Yeah, it's not a complicated shot yeah. either. But And he's not even, like, taking it. Like, everyone's coming to give him a pat on the mm. back, and he's just like, no, I'm not doing it today. Friendship between different races and when you talk about friendship in between different races you talk about empathy uh, uh, all right pretty sure the main thing was good versus evil corruption why does it have to be about race like why do you have to bring race to the world? they can't just be friends uh they're talking yeah, the race thing comes up a lot and well, like I mean, surely different like races gimli but... and legolas when does it ever be like is it about him being a dwarf or an elf they're just friends it is for a bit but then but it's, it's like it's, it's done it's... Really, it's, it's a yeah. It's a very very small aspect exactly. of it, mm. and and I don't think it's actual racism that's the issue between the two. It's more as though we've had some massive wars and problems in the past. Yeah, yeah cultural differences basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's less about the race thing and more about like, hey, you and me come from different walks of life. Yeah, I think Tolkien described it as dwarves see nature as like a tool to use to better like everything. Yeah, whereas elves are the opposite, and mm. that's like a big big thing between the two of them that is just. Hard to reconcile. But yeah. when they do, because Gimli and Legolas is more about combat, oh, yeah. they're warriors, it's, they're, they're, they're pals, they're oh, friends. Yeah, absolutely. Because they know, they, yeah, have Probably a... one of the best um, friendships in the trilogy. Yeah. I mean, then. he even goes to the under... Oh, he doesn't go to the Undying Lanes, but he goes to like the little the little stop, right? Before the Undying Yeah, Lanes. I think so. Um, Gimli does. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just funny how they talk about, you know, friendship and empathy, and they've been friends for so long, but mm. then there's this conflict, and they kind of just ignore the whole history they've had. I haven't then... seen you for bloody 20 years. <laughs> like, yeah, just yeah. a little conflict and yeah. normal friend stuff. It just, it's so dumb <laughs> where it's like, if they were friends before, they must have gotten past all these issues with race, mm. and uh-huh. then suddenly they've brought it back up again. No, it's because he didn't call him for 20 years. That's the that's Why the not? That... Elrond, if you're like such good... Oh, it just... He's not busy. Oh, I mean, he shouldn't he's be. He's not. not an elf lord. He's not, and Gladwell's so been he off. He's been probably bored out of his brain doing nothing in that tree, just writing away at his little things, going like, oh, maybe I should go talk to my friends. I don't have any friends. Because you was, forgot about them. It was very important uh, poetry that he was working on, okay? Oh, it just... The characterization in this is frustrating. Oh, yeah. And now we've got more forgettable characters. Oh, yes, that, sir. Mm. I forgot her name. It's very related to fairy tales. 
you know, this kind of storytelling. Look at that the, look at the, oh, it looks so much better. Don't show us this. It makes me more upset. Even just the atmosphere of this feels way cooler than what we got. Yeah. You, what is the right thing to do? What is the wrong thing to do? Um, I, I hate that line because the basically premise of this series was mm. that you got to do a bit of wrong to do the right thing. Uh. He says, you know, it's about the good and bad. No, in this show, what Gladrill learns is that you need to touch the darkness, do the bad thing. Where? Where do you need to touch the darkness? In the ocean. I mean, Hellbrand is pretty much the embodiment of darkness. And I think Gladrill wants to touch that. Yeah, yeah, she wants to tap that at least. She wants his mace. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, you can't tell me this is a show about uh, good and evil when you're basically saying, no, nah, it's just all grey. You've got to do a bit of one to get the other. Sauron is just a misunderstood villain. Yeah. We can fix him. It was Morgoth who did it all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sauron was just dragged into it, you know? He was just an innocent bystander, you know? He's, just, he's the victim in this, okay? He totally didn't sick, sick uh, a bunch of werewolves on her brother. Yeah, that didn't happen. You know, even though he killed people and, you know, was, what, the Prince of Darkness, would you say? I don't know if I... The, sec the Secretary of Darkness. Secretary of Darkness. Yeah, that, that, he got that's things more done. appropriate, yeah. <laughs> just a lieutenant of Morgoth. I've been thrilled to work with Jay Bayona again, who I absolutely adore. His episode said, you know, a really cross-section of stuff. Oh, yeah, story. they smash rocks for a while. I forgot about that. <sighs> then he gets tired, then he gets kicked out, but then he doesn't what? get kicked out. I like... just don't understand. Why is that... It, that show was filled with so much ridiculous filler, and they even just show us like a, a shot of the in the making of. Why? Because yeah. well, it was a really interesting episode, as the unit director guy just said. Like it was had lots of interesting things in it, except for this one filler bit that wasn't interesting at all. That's probably because it was a money shot, hmm. not the dirty one. Like the shot where like they spend a lot of money and they only get to do it like once or twice, smashing a big rock. Money mm. shot. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Doesn't do anything to the story, though. No, it doesn't. Sequence. The Digger Orc sequence was fun. Oh, right. This... I remember this. I mean, I wasn't against this idea in principle, mm -hmm. like introducing an Orc by making them, like, a horror scene type thing. The problem is the Orc is really stupid, and they set up that the Orc can survive insane stab wounds. But not the sun. Not the sun. The sun will kill it. Oh, yeah. It'll yeah. die in the sun because it's a vampire. With the help of some movie magic, I'm going to slay an orc. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have Peek around. And he's the best collaborator. I designed a whole storyboard for that scene, and I sent the storyboard to Peek, and he understood absolutely every frame. Sometimes his accent, I can't understand. He's saying pig? <laughs> I thought Bick. Bick. Okay. I, his accent, I think I the just... guy's name is Vic. I'm having a hard time sometimes yeah. hearing. Yeah. This is also we the know. director of Godzilla. The, the, the most movie. recent one? Uh, the movies, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, I'm... Um, mm. Take that really, as you will. Really deep conversations about it. I'd get into the storyboarding of it with him. Then my job is to how we do this practically. That was... I mean... You really shouldn't slow that down. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, you really it looks not. way worse. <laughs> I... It's really, really fun, and it's a lot harder than it looks. Everything. Uh, I don't want to say, but he's a kid. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Poor guy. I, I mean, hope you get to be in better stuff, mate. Yeah, like he's probably this is probably like his first big thing. Hmm. Good for you, my man. I'm Hopefully sorry. Can, yeah, go for something cool the next time. Yeah. If there is a next time after this, read a script. It has to be so technical, you know, you put your arm up at the exact moment and as it hits here, then you've got to go down. Why, now, here's the thing. Why did none of the other orcs look like that? Because he was the scary orc for the scary scene. <laughs> He's a special orc. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's just like Azog. Yeah. Oh, wait, Azog was supposed to be unique, wasn't he? Oops. Well, when I say special, I mean special. 
That's true. A special walk. It was a special Very walk. special. Very special. You have no walk. idea how special he was <laughs> until you watch the episode, man. Bronwyn spoke to me because her journey is really finding herself, her inner strength. She... Whoa, 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 whoa. No, it's that not. That was the journey? Finding herself and her inner strength? Okay, for one thing, you're a mother of, like, what? I'm guessing she's, like, 30 years old. I thought Arundir was going to find her inner strength. I don't know, just a thought. <laughs> I mean, probably already has. Yeah, yeah, he has. But like, again, they're trying to do the whole like, oh, origin story type thing of like, I have to find the power within me and this and that. But you, you don't even do that in the episode. She already has her inner strength. Has a son that she feels very compelled to protect. Uh, yeah, of course. yeah, like that being a mother. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's motherly duties. Uh, like uh, the planting of a world that you can notice that something's cooking in the shadows. Okay, you're gonna have to reverse this because what is- I think we need subs. <laughs> it's true though, like, we're Aussies far out. None of you can pronounce the towns we live in. Don't call us, the, you know. I mean, to be fair, we can barely do that. Yeah, we can yeah. barely do that as ourselves, but like, don't call us out for not understanding something, because yeah. heck. I think that the whole first and second episode are like a, the planting of a world. Planting of... Really? Did he say word or planting world? Planting of a the world. world. Okay, right. Well, we've got subtitles now. So, yeah. so like, he's established in the world, basically, is what but he's But then again, the subtitles, the, they don't always match what he says. Yeah, exactly. No, no, That's no, what I mean, yeah. Something's cooking in the shadows. And cooking? Sh what? What? Cooking in the shadows? I mean, I know I'm nitpicking here, but I don't think... That's how that works. Shadows are represented in Bronwyn's story. Those things moving underground. This character is underground a lot, so he's not breathing in and out through his mouth. It's <laughs> it, again, we're getting another. These episodes, I think, are laid out the same. Like we're, now, we're getting the like in-depth visual effects, you know, character world building. It's just called Digger Orc. Digger. D i g g e r. That's the name of this orc. Digger orc. That's just the name of it. Yep. Mm. He's drawing a lot of a, a focus on digger. Yeah. And he's just like he doesn't breathe through his nostrils or mouth because he's underground. I don't right. know what the so hell that's got to do with anything. So what's, so. Uh, what's that mean then? Why is this important? Very short and sharp. Because he does want to get a lot of dust and dirt in his nose. He's a ballet dancer. <laughs> Digger Orc is oh. a ballet dancer by profession. Okay, then. Um, These behind the scenes Why are do we need to know this? The show. I know, they're just jumping between oh, random I'm things confused. and concepts. Yeah, he has short breaths. Okay. He's a ballet dancer by profession? <laughs> what? Okay, next... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that behind the scenes, in reality, if it was honest, this was... You don't have to sense this. A cluster... It was just all There's over the no play, way yeah. it wasn't, because they have got so much gloss over this, you can't see anything. No, you can't. Uh, by profession, and what he's done in this role is so inspiring. He had uh, one episode! Why do they keep doing this? He was he's in so the... inspiring. It's so world-changing. No, my dude, you're just acting in a show. Like, you could say he's a good actor, he's fun to be around, we're great friends, but being like, he's the inspiration. Oh no, why does it look like a... all stunt doubles. It looks like a pig. That's what I was going to say. I was yeah. like, why am I watching Willow the movie again? <laughs> yeah, the more that we go back and see Rings of Power and then go look at Willow, man... The contrast is very... Ugh. Why does it always have to be an inspiring story? Why does it always have to be changing the world? Like, do you... Th I don't sit here and think, I'm changing the world right now. We're changing the world by making this... No, what? No, nah, we're just Sometimes whinging. you're just doing stuff. Yeah, we're just whinging about this. That's all. Yeah, no, this... Just, oh, I hate these behind the scenes. Like, the older stuff used mm. to be so good. Know what you are for... Bloody hell. Yeah. He contorts his body. He uses his voice. So acting. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> acting. <laughs> Definition of acting there. <laughs> Sorry, you're not He Andy. does his job. Sorry, you're not Andy Circus. I don't <laughs> They've got this feeling like a coiled spring, so they can have full extension. Say when they're slashing or fighting, the feeling of unpredictability is important to them. Except all the other times when the other orcs were completely predictable. Just normal yeah. orcs. Yeah. yeah. So they, they did this guy for 
one episode and then we never see his type ever again, so. Yeah. The orc appears and battle ensues. She drops oh, that's, the head of yeah, the orc in the front of everyone cut. for people mm -hmm. to see right over there. And I think that's when people start to take her seriously. Why? That still doesn't make any sense. Oh. You didn't justify anything again. Oh, this is a very... Uh, so... And that's the end of it. That, that's, that's the, that's yeah. the end of part two. Um, these behind the scenes are actually becoming more and more painful to watch. Yep. Because we're not learning anything. If anything, they become more frustrating. Like, obviously, it shows their incompetence and in how much they... Well, like they're just understanding. I feel as though they're just random streams of consciousness. They yeah. just jump between random things. They just go, oh, this, that. And then it's like, right, okay, bit jarring. I don't know what I'm watching. Yeah, you're not really getting any insight into what this experience was for them. No. <laughs> and everything is like a one-second snippet of an actor saying something that is just weird and then yeah. jumping to something new. Yeah, yeah basically. It's, and it's bizarre. Showing... I, I don't get it. I, I wish I could understand. I mean, the Hobbit movies even had m more uh, honest behind the scenes where they were like, oh, yeah, this was really hard. Yeah. I think Peter Jackson was like, yeah, look, this has fallen apart. The yep. last trilogy, at least I had a team behind me who could pull me through this. Yep. But this this is not going to be... Like George Lucas, when The Phantom yep. Menace was first cut, he's like, hmm, I might have tried doing too much here. <laughs> I may have stuffed up. Yep. Careful. Be very careful with your line of... No, but what I'm you, saying is, like, like he careful. was at least uh -oh. admitting his faults. Okay. Like, he was okay. able to... Like, mm. <laughs> not throwing any shit for any mercy, all right? All right Better Thomas? be real careful. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this. Okay? Yeah. This was somewhat therapeutic, somewhat frustrating to get through, so we hope you at least were able to come along with us on the journey. Um, part three coming out. Uh, a at little, some point. At some point. So you enjoyed the last one. Hope you enjoyed this one. And as always, stay on watch.